everyone, my name is Shauna in case you don't know and welcome back to another video. I watched a movie recently that I feel I want to talk about on my channel so that's what I'm gonna do. The movie that I watched was called Lost Girls in Love Hotels. It's rated R and I didn't know what to expect going in. I knew that Alexandra Daddario was in it and she's one of my favorite actresses so I really wanted to watch this movie but I really wish that I would have looked up more about what the movie was actually about because I was thoroughly confused based off of the trailer. Based off the trailer I thought this was going to be some sort of thriller type movie and also the fact that there was lost girls in it I thought like maybe there was some like creepy like crime element to it like horror element to it and I was so so wrong. Lost Girls in Love Hotels is about this English teacher who goes to Tokyo and she's sort of like lost in life which is where the lost girls phrase and the title comes from. She sort of doesn't know what she's doing with her life, doesn't know the point in her life. So in order to like cope with this feeling of like not knowing where she is in life, it's why she goes to Tokyo and she also wants to like escape from the stuff that happened in her past, which it didn't reveal too much stuff about what exactly those details in the past were in the movie. And then the Love Hotel part comes in with she's so like confused and stuff that she is getting really involved in sex, having lots of sex to sort of cope with her issues. However, the issues are never explicitly stated. I was confused watching this movie. I didn't see the point of the movie. And so I actually looked up information about this movie after I finished watching the movie. Apparently it's her trying to deal with the fact that she's starting to get schizophrenia, which I didn't get from the movie at all. From this movie, I got that she's confused in life and she's addicted to sex, which is apparently not what it's supposed to be about. Which just goes to show that I would say that this isn't the best adaptation of a book ever because this was originally based off of a book. Also, in case you can't tell, this is very much an adult movie. So unfortunately, a lot of the content that I'll be talking about is very adult. So keep that in mind if you are younger or not comfortable hearing about this stuff. So I've watched tons of Alexandra Dario stuff and I didn't know she'd ever venture into the full nudity side of things. And yeah. I became a fan of hers with Percy Jackson, so to see her naked on the screen having sex was a little jarring, I'd say. It wasn't what I expected, nor what I necessarily wanted. I mean, kudos to her for being so confident in her body and for still acting incredibly despite having to do scenes that she may have been feeling uncomfortable to do. One thing that I was feeling while watching this movie that I've been feeling a lot recently whenever there's nudity in any sort of movie, I'm like, how do you do that? well your family is like gonna watch it like you know that your family is gonna try and watch it to support you and if your parents aren't around well maybe your aunt or your uncle or your cousin is gonna watch it like how do you just confidently do nudity scenes knowing that your relatives are gonna watch it that's what i've been thinking a lot about recently i don't know why i just have like yeah because i know alexandra daddario has a brother matthew daddario so he probably watched this movie like how do you just like Film a movie like this, have your family watch the movie, then just pretend like everything's normal. Besides the fact that they have seen you completely nude. It's just weird to me, you know? So I felt that the actors in this film did incredible. I was very grateful that this was a film set in Tokyo that didn't have a completely white cast. I've seen so many movies where there's a mostly white cast set in a country where it's not mostly white people there. And I was glad that it, this movie wasn't really the same like sure the main actress was white and they did have her in Tokyo but it was better than a lot of the other ones I've seen that sort of like exploits a country where people of color live by like using it as a setting and having like a full white cast like it did so much better there was parts in Japanese in here there was a mostly Asian cast besides Alexandra Daddario and two of her friends in the film maybe three of her friends because like yeah I'm just gonna say three of her friends I'm not gonna tell you why but yeah see there's only like for actors who are white in this film and the rest is Japanese which I thought was really cool and done really well. So speaking of the sexual things because it's impossible to avoid that conversation while talking about this movie, this movie has a lot of I think it's called BDSM. It's a kink that some people have or a fetish if you want to call it that and I was really uncomfortable watching those scenes. Like I know people do this but like I'm not comfortable with it and watching it happening on screen. If I had known that there was BDSM in this movie, I probably would not have watched this movie right away. BDSM is doing things like bordering on violent, sort of. Like using handcuffs, like having people choke you. I don't like that stuff. 
and also the main relationship was an affair which made me a little uncomfy. I think that knowing this is about schizophrenia now it's a little different to me because I can see how she's like spiraling out of control and struggling for mental health issues. There's nothing to signify that it was specifically schizophrenia but you can see that it's someone struggling with their mental health and I didn't feel like it was exactly like I don't know exactly the best resolution I'd say to her mental health issues how she got better I feel like maybe this should have been like 10 minutes longer and maybe there should have been some scenes of her going to therapy when she returned to her home country I think that the major good thing about this film was the acting which I've talked about already I thought that the actors did great with the roles that they were given and with the script that they were given the movie was very lacking on plot and very much it was more just sex scenes so i think the actors and actresses did an incredible job of really taking their script and doing the best that they could with it i've sort of been trying to pay more attention to that when i'm watching movies that i'm not a huge fan of instead of like just sitting there like oh this is such a bad movie i try and focus more on like okay i'm gonna listen to the script and what they were given with the script and see if the actors and actresses did a good job with the script and this movie i felt like they really did as i said this movie is based off of a book and the book was written by katherine hanrahan I have not read the book. I do have it on my want to read list on Goodreads. I really like to read the books that go along with the movies that I watch just to see if there's any like deeper thing that the movies missed out on. And in this case, I feel like I am going to see that because this book has something to do with schizophrenia, with her falling into schizophrenia, her brother having schizophrenia. I think that the book will be better and much deeper. So I'm very interested in reading the book and seeing what things are missed out on. And also, since this movie felt like it was lacking so much in plot, I'm hoping that the book has more of a well-developed plot and I am interested in seeing what it's about. So those were my major thoughts on this film, Lost Girls and Love Hotels. It is definitely not a film for everybody. It wasn't a film for me. However, if you are very into sexual things, then maybe it is a film for you. Or if you really like to deeply analyze films, then maybe this is a film for you. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to people, but I can see how people would enjoy this film. This film is currently available on Hulu. As I said, it stars Alexandra Daddario. You may recognize her from things like San Andreas and Percy Jackson. And that's really all my thoughts for this movie. So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to me if you haven't already. So tomorrow is a big day for my YouTube channel. Tomorrow is a day that I am starting spooky month videos. I have never done this before, but I really love Halloween. So I wanted to do some spooky month videos on my channel. So tomorrow is going to be fun. Get ready to get in the spooky mood. I'm going to be wearing some fun costumes all throughout this month and I hope all of you stick around to see those videos. I'll see all of you tomorrow. Goodbye!